Let us pray. Lavishly loving God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your grace-filled word. Even though sometimes we close our heart to you, or our commitment is shallow, or our busyness leaves no place for you, you keep sowing your seeds of love that we might receive them with joy and go forth to bring forth an abundant harvest for your kingdom. Through Christ the Lord. Amen. You might know that one of my first goals in retirement was to become a master gardener. Mainly because gardening has been a, a passion since I was seven or eight when I planted my first four o'clock seeds. During the master gardener training, I discovered that the more I learned about gardening, the more I didn't know. So, so not to be arrogant, even blasphemous, but I just might know more about gardening than God. You see, I know that seeds need to be sown in good, fertile, loamy soil, soil enriched with compost. That was the first lesson of my master gardener training, compost. This morning, Jesus tells us a story about a gardener, a sower of seeds. It is God who cares not at all about what kind of ground the seed falls on. God scatters the seed willy-nilly. Even, even on ground that holds no promise for a fruitful and abundant harvest. But there God goes, scattering the seed with abandon, carelessly, really, recklessly, much of the seed wasted. Did you know that in our 21st century world of farming, there are GPS driven planters, engineered to make sure the seed goes in a particular place, in a particular row, so that the greatest harvest will be achieved. Jesus' first century hearers were just as shocked as today's farmers would be to hear this story of wasteful sowing. So what's Jesus' point here? What's the message of this parable? It is that God shows no limit in scattering, scattering seeds of divine love, seeds of mercy, seeds of faith, seeds of peace and hope. Scattering these seeds, whether or not we are always receptive. God knows that each of us at times, we can be impenetrable, impenetrable soil, hardened, refusing to let God transform and heal an area of our life that we've deemed off limits to God. Refusing, for example, to allow God's call for justice 
understand reconciliation to unseat an entrenched prejudice of long standing within us, or refusing to let God's call to forgiveness turn us away from that grudge we harbor toward a relative, neighbor, or one-time friend. Oh God, you are the Lord of my life, except, except when it comes to this one aspect of my life. Let each of us answer what that aspect might be. And then there's the rocky or shallow soil. The seed of God's word is eagerly and enthusiastically welcomed. But the welcome is short-lived. With the first sign of trouble, God's follower flees the faith. When the going gets rough, the follower falls away. By way of illustration, perhaps, perhaps the novelty of live streaming has worn off and watching Meet the Press is now how you spend Sunday mornings. Thankfully, you who are present hearing this homily, you are sticking with Sunday worship long term. God and I thank you. The soil filled with weeds and thorn bushes is, of course, the life that is so, so filled with worldly priorities and values and activities that are not of God, not of God, that there just isn't any room for God, no place for the seeds of God's word, the seeds of faith, the seeds of love to sprout and root and grow and flourish to flowering or fruit. Jesus' message in telling this parable, and, it, and it's good news, my friends, is that God, God doesn't give up on us, no matter what kind of soil we are at any given time. Whether we are receptive or not, God incessantly, lavishly, wastefully, and gracefully keep scattering and sowing the seeds of God's promises, the seeds of God's love and redemption. So it was with God's Son, Jesus, over and over again, Jesus sowed the seeds of God's word on his disciples even though they so often, so many times, looked and acted so unpromising. But Jesus didn't give up on them, oh no, didn't give up on them in spite of their many failings. So too, Jesus sowed without limit, with abandon, the seeds of his love and the seeds of his mercy and healing on tax collectors and all manner of sinners and, and outcasts. And so we also, we trust that God will not give up on us, but will keep working on whatever in our heart and life, whatever is hardened or rocky and shallow or thorny and weed infested, God will not give up on us, but keep sowing generously in the yearning and in the hope that some of that divine seed will fall on good soil, where it will flourish and where it will bring forth an unimaginably abundant harvest for God's kingdom. 
And here's the thing. Hardened soil, rocky soil, and thorny soil in the power of God's Spirit, in the hands of God, can become good soil where the seed of faith can germinate and grow and flourish and, yes, fill our days and our lives. And when it does, we then become sowers of the divine seeds, God's seeds of love, hope, and, and help. Called by God, we too are to sow with abandon, leaving the sprouting and the growing and the harvesting to God. And so and so, every week, Sandwich Thursdays continue here. Every Thursday, providing lunch for the hungry children of Milton, God's seeds of love. And guess what? The community notices. Last Thursday, $120 was received in donations, unsolicited but so welcomed, from strangers who applaud this ministry of food and want to support what is being done. Another example, the desperate needs of the asylum seekers at our southern border are as acute and critical as ever. Financial support to provide for them food and tents and medical supplies and backpacks is still, still urgently needed. So I ask you, I invite you to send the seeds, the seeds of your caring, your monetary gifts here to the church, your gift designated Asylum Seekers Project, Asylum Seekers Project. I assure you our sister Episcopal Church, St. John's Episcopal Church in McAllen, Texas, at the forefront, at the center of this ministry, will receive your mercy offerings. My heartfelt thanks goes out to Jessica, Jessica Clark, a member of our St. John the Baptist family for keeping the imperative of this need before us and asking for our continuing support for this humanitarian ministry, this ministry of Christ, to keep that ministry in the forefront of our minds and our hearts and our checkbooks. In closing, I thank God, I thank God, that in scattering seeds of love and mercy, God is more concerned not with efficiency, but with, with extravagance, extravagance. God scatters in the hope that sometime, somewhere, with someone, the divine seed will find a home in good soil, and that those in whom the seed grows will themselves become sowers of the divine seeds of God's love and help, sowing with abundance and with abandon, sowing the seeds of God's kingdom. And I'm also, I'm also filled with gratitude that God is the master gardener, far wiser far wiser, thank God, than any earthly master gardener, me included. For with lavish grace, this master gardener, the Lord God sows, sows lavishly seeds of redemption, the redemption of souls, yours and mine included. God is the master gardener of mercy who 
sews extravagantly with lavish love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.